You can also create basic shapes within your worksheet if it calls for it, like arrows, circles, rectangles, squares. In any case, to insert a shape, come up here, click on the Insert tab, go to the Illustrations group, and click on Shapes, and there you go. Now, if you're looking for a circle or a square, you're not going to find it in here. Instead, you'll find a rectangle and an oval. Now, if you want a circle, select the oval. If you want a square, select the rectangle. I know it doesn't make any sense, at least not now, but trust me. Let's say that we want a circle. Select the oval, and then you'll notice that my pointer is a black cross. When I click and drag, it creates the circle. And if you go ahead and do it down and to the right perfectly, you get the circle. If you go too far to the right and up, you get an elongated oval horizontally or vertically. Now, if you want to do it perfectly and not eyeball it, then hold down the Shift key while you're doing it, and Microsoft will help you out here and give you the perfect circle. Go ahead and let go of the mouse, let go of the Shift key, and sweet. It's also the same for the square. If you come back up here, instead of going to the Insert tab, now that I have my shape inserted, I get the Related Contextual Format tab, so when I want to insert additional shapes, it's nice that it's right here. Go ahead and select the rectangle, click and drag. If I go too far and up, there's an elongated rectangle, and of course too far down to the left. Hold down the Shift key, pops open to the perfect square. Neato. Go ahead and delete that. Select it again so I can get the Format tab back up. Come up here, let's do a star, and then click and drag inside the circle or on top of it. Hold down the Shift key so I can get the perfect proportion, let go. And then as far as color goes, I can do the Shape Fill here for yellow, and then I can do an outline. Let's see, we can do it in orange. Uh, shape Effects, Glows, Soft Edges, or we can do a Shape Style. Well, that looks kind of nice, like that. And then if I want to center it, click and drag and try to get it by eyeing it and thinking that's the center. Let me move it over here. You can do it that way, or if you want Microsoft to help you out, select the shape on top, then hold down the Shift key and select the one behind it. So we can come up here on the Format tab to the Arrange group and click on the Align Objects drop-down arrow to align the objects first to the center and then to the middle. And then click off. Oh, my mom would be so proud. The other modifications you can do is that if you want a shape there, but it's not the shape that you want right now, instead of a star, I want it to be something else. Instead of going back through all of that, select the shape, come back up here on the Format tab to the Insert Shapes group, click on Edit Shape to change, and let's do a happy face. That way I didn't have to redraw it to that proportion, it just changed it for me. Let's go ahead and select it and delete it, and then select our shape again. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and add text to my shape. A couple ways you can do it. One's not really adding it. One's, well, let me go ahead and hover over the lower right-hand corner of the circle so I can click and drag on that resizing handle and make it more oval. Then click and drag it, put it on top of the Increase Profits. And then come up here on the Format tab to the Shape Styles group and click on its expandable dialog box button to bring up the Task Pane. Expand the Fill here and let's make it transparent. Hey, isn't that neat? Now I can see the text behind it. Now you can do it that way if you have text and you want an object on top of it. Make it transparent so you can see the text behind it. Of course, with the grid lines it doesn't look pretty. You can come up here, click on the Page Layout tab to the Sheet Options and uncheck Grid Lines. Of course, the cells are still there. I just can't see the borders around it. Let me go ahead and add it back in. Now, you can do it that way. Let me go ahead and select it. And while I'm here, let's just come over here in the Task Pane, go to Size and Properties, and let's go to the Size and expand it. You know, you can also rotate it here numerically instead of doing it by freehand, as we learned in an earlier training video that when you hover over the top rotation handle, when you click on it, you can tilt it left or right, and let me go back. If you click on it, hold down the Shift key, you can do it in increments of about 15 degrees or so. You can also come over here and type it in, what you want it to rotate to, 45, hit Enter. Okay, in any case, let me go ahead and undo that. And let's go back to the uh, fill and say no fill. Now you don't have to deal with it at all, okay? Let's go back to solid fill. And then if you want to add text to it, you don't want to make it transparent. Just right-click on it and go down to Edit Text. The cursor is flashing in it, so you can type in something spiffy. And then if you want to go ahead and format the text within it, there's quite a few ways you can do it. You can, well, triple-click on it to bring up the mini formatting toolbar. 
or you can come over here in the task pane and select text options and go ahead and right now it's a solid fill of white you can change that to let's do red or you can come up here on the home tab to the font group and you also get to change it here we can make it orange uh, I like red undo and then we can change the size make it a little bit larger and then as far as the alignment goes well it's to the left I can come up here and make it in the middle and vertical alignment well there's the middle that was center go ahead and select that of course, you can always come over here in the task pane to the text box, and you can change the alignment there for vertical, and then mess with the margins. If you have a lot of text, you can have it right next to the margin, or you can kind of buffer it and push it over, or, you know, you can click inside and just hit the space key several times. It's up to you. And, of course, let's go ahead and delete that so I don't have any text in it. If I want to get rid of it, click outside of it. And if I want to go ahead and have the shape be connected to a cell, after I select it, come up here in the formula bar, hit equals, and then go ahead and select a cell like A1, hit enter. So if I come into cell A1 and type in buy, hit enter, well, that's what's being pulled over here into the shape. How about equals 4 plus 2? A simple formula, enter, gives me the result 6. Then, of course, to unlink it, let's select the shape, come up here in the formula bar, delete it, hit enter, and it gives me the text in it. It's no longer linked to it, so I can just go ahead and click inside of it, delete it, click outside, and we're back to a simple shape that contains no text. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for all my training, please visit me at my website, dreamforce.us.